A warm welcome to everyone watching today and thank you once again for choosing Brown Plus TV as your choice. I'm going to be starting the dish off very simply by introducing the main ingredients before us today. But before I get to that part, I will also mention that we are going to be focusing on three beautiful basic principles, which is nutrition, fiber and protein. And with that mentioned, I'm going to be making a very, very simple lamb stir fry, which we're going to be pairing with some tofu. But before we get to that part, we'll introduce the ingredients before us just to give you an idea of what to expect. Now from the very front, I've got some julian carrots. I've also got some snow peas and I've also got some about four or five pieces of uh, baby corn. I've also got about 400 grams of some lamb. I've also got about, uh, about 50 grams of some uh, chunky cut uh, courgettes. I've also got about half a cup of some green beans some oil to cook with and some vegetable stock. You will also require some fresh coriander for this recipe. You will also require some two wedges of red and yellow capsicum, about 250 grams of some tofu soaked in its liquid. You'll also require some salt, which you're going to be seasoning your dish with, some beautiful bullet chilies, about half a red onion peeled and washed. And you'll also require about two tablespoons of some mixed herbs, about half a tablespoon of some sesame oil and about one tablespoon of some soy sauce. So we're going to allow you to take this time to refresh yourselves and prepare yourself for the show to come and we'll catch you after a very short break. Welcome back viewers, if you're just tuning in, you probably missed out on the most important part of the show, but it's still not too late. We're going to be working on a very simple lamb stir fry today. And to begin the process, I'm going to begin by frying up my tofu. Remember, particularly to mention on this particular stage, tofu will actually require cooking. So you may actually want to record this if you're taking notes that tofu cannot be consumed raw. So we're going to begin the process very, very simply by grabbing a sieve and right over your sink, proceed to pour out the liquid and you can allow your tofu to very much simply just sit over your bowl, allow it to drain for a few seconds before you proceed to add it to some oil, which will of course reduce any chances of you having any sparks of fire or you burning yourself as well. Now to a pot on the side, begin to, re to heat up a bit of oil. So I'm using vegetable oil for this recipe. You are very much welcome to use any particular other oil that you may alternatively go for. I will also mention that particularly when you're frying, you may want to be very vigilant in making sure not to use something too expensive because you may not be able to reuse. So my, I always advocate for vegetable oil because one, it's cost effective, second of all, it's healthy, and third, it is actually able to go a little longer. So, very simply, just finish off by giving your tofu a shake. And now we're going to proceed to place that on some parchment paper. This is going to aid it in draining off a little faster. So for that, I'm going to move that onto a separate board just to make sure that you don't contaminate your ingredients. And you can proceed to discard your sieve and allow your tofu to just sit and drain very, very gently before you get to the frying part. Now next up, we're going to proceed to grab the meat and we'll begin by cleaning off any excess fat from it. So very simply on a board, Proceed to begin by first taking out the bone end of, the, of your chops. And you can proceed to just slice that lengthways into some workable chunks. You will actually proceed to slice that into julienne very, very shortly. 
but very important, begin by removing any sinew or any fat from your meat. Remember, these are particularly hard to chew and not very pleasant to have in your dish, especially for a stir fry. And you also have to very much make sure to remove your bone because remember, a stir fry does, of course, call for some steak, which of course means boneless meat. Proceed to remove any excess sinew from your meat as you proceed to do so. Making sure, of course, to use the nicest part of the cut that you can be able to find from your local butcher. And for this recipe, you can also make an, you can also make add a small reminder that you can actually use beef fillet. It is a little more expensive than your regular chops, but it is actually tender and it is actually a superior cut. So if you can actually be able to get some beef fillet for this recipe, you're more than welcome to do so. Right, so our oil is hot. We're going to proceed to add just one cube of our tofu, just to check for the temperature of the oil. And you can pretty much allow that to sit in there right up until the oil just starts to bubble right around it. This is a very particular important step to make sure to go with because remember if your oil is too hot, your tofu will color a little faster and you may actually not be able to control the temperature from that point on. So be sure to start off by frying at very low heat and allow that to continue to cook right up until it's golden brown in color. So our oil is now bubbly. Proceed to add your tofu. Of course, making sure to give a little room between each piece, allowing them to brown a little more evenly. You may also want to be very gentle with your tofu at this stage because this will actually break very, very easily. And you may actually want to be sure to make sure to do so. Of course, to avoid any waste at this particular stage. Right, so once your tofu is in, proceed to remove your kitchen towel. And you can proceed to replace that with some fresh kitchen paper that you will be using to drain off any excess oil from your tofu. And you can allow that to continue cooking for anywhere between four to six minutes, right up until it's beautifully golden brown. And while that continues, we will proceed to slice our lamb into some very thin strips. And as I mentioned a little earlier, very important to always pick the best cut you possibly can when selecting meat for a stir fry. Be sure to avoid to use any meat that is particularly still attached to the bone because it will be tough based on the fact that it is all muscle. And if you are looking for the most tender cut, as I mentioned earlier, beef fillet will actually give you the precision you're looking for. Right, so proceed to slice your meat thin, making sure, of course, to use a sharp knife. And proceed to do so till you get to the very end. And as I mentioned, always make sure not to add any of your sinew. Remember, this cannot actually cook any further. It will actually become very gelatinous and very chewy which is something you're both, you're both trying to avoid and also trying very much to spend time on. And last but not least, the last and final bit. So very important, always be sure to rinse your hands after working with some meat. And very importantly, never Proceed to uh, brown your meat on a cold pan. So very importantly, begin by giving your pan a bit of time to heat up on the side. That should take you about a minute, which will allow you to come back to your tofu. Now, if you can be able to get that from the cameras, you will actually be able to see your tofu puff up really nicely after uh, allowing it to drain. Remember, tofu is very absorbent. It is actually just bean curd that's actually been squeezed out of any water. 
And when you add it to your oil, remember it will actually begin to soak up quite a bit of oil. It will actually puff up in size and it may actually, be give, it may actually give you the notion that it will remain the same size. But remember this will actually shrink right into the process of cooking. So very simply proceed to move your pieces around with your pair of tongs making sure that your tofu is not stuck to the bottom of your pot and that your pieces are cooking more evenly. And now this has been cooking for anywhere between four to six minutes. The temperature is at medium. Very important to mention that if you do actually cook this at very low heat, your tofu will actually be very soggy, so be sure to always take some time to check for the temperature before frying. And another thing to also mention, if you are going to be frying this, you may actually want to do it in a pot that's actually deep enough. Always allow a bit more room of oil. This will allow your ingredients to move around the oil more freely and cook a little evener. All right, so this is now almost coming to the halfway mark. Very important to keep tossing your tofu while it continues to cook. And just a small tip I can share with you while this proceeds to brown on the pan. Tofu is a very, very good substitute for minerals, for low fiber and particularly low fat. And of course, it's got a nice, beautiful kick of protein. So if you are actually looking for beautiful substitutes to use instead of using meat, tofu is a particular good one. Beans, of course, are also another very good alternative. And of course, as you all know, it's not so much healthy to stick with eating red meat. So you can alternatively use a bit of tofu in replacement for a chunk of meat. Probably go half and half with the portion. It will actually give you the same nutritional balance. But of course, making sure that you do get it in a more nutritious way. Right, so tofu is almost done now and the pan is starting to heat up on the other side. Right, we're going to allow that to continue. Now onto the new pan, proceed to add a bit of cooking oil. Of course, moving your oil around your pan by tilting your pan sideways allows for you to get a nice more even coat of oil to your pan and you can at this stage proceed to pour out any excess oil into the pot of oil on the side this is a particular good way of making sure not to have too much oil on your pan remember the oil especially if you're working with nonstick pans such as this you only need that little bit of oil to be able to get through your cooking process. And next, proceed to add your pieces of lamb to your pan. Taking time to spread your pieces around. Now this will take you anywhere between four to eight minutes to get a nice more even browning around your pan. So be sure to allow that to cook and disturb for just a little bit. Giving you just a bit more time to come back to your tofu. Tossing of course continuously, getting that nice even color through. Proceed to do so, of course, making sure to cover any particular areas of the tofu that's not completely fried and browned off. You can also use your tongs to just turn your pieces around and you can hold them at the same position for just a little bit, allowing for an even cooking on the other side. Remember, your pieces will, of course, toss and turn as you proceed to cook and you may actually struggle a little bit in getting that color right. Right, that's almost halfway now. We're going to give that a few minutes. In the meantime, I'll proceed to 
switch my board around, making sure not to have any particular traces of blood on the other side, and proceed to turn that over, bringing us to the next stage of preparing our ingredients. So very important to make sure, especially when working with a stir fry, always try and make sure to have your ingredients almost the same size. Try to keep them julienne. And at this stage, we can proceed to mix our meat around in the pan. Of course, maintaining high heat right through. Right, so while your, pad, while your pan proceeds to heat up and cook through, we're just going to rest that spoon on the side and bring your attention back to the vegetable. So we're going to begin by julienning this very, very quickly on our board. And you can begin with your snow peas. proceeding to chop as fine as you possibly can getting a nice even chop right through and proceed to do the same till you get to the very end now one particular thing most of you may not know about snow peas is they're particularly very good in uh, nutrition and they carry a nice beautiful balance of minerals as well as water they are also very, they're actually very rare to find in the city at the moment, being that they're very seasonal. But if you can actually be able to get your hands on some beautiful snow peas, they're a very good addition to your dish. And they actually bring in a nice beautiful touch of green color and crisp to your stir fry. Right, so meat's almost browned off. We're going to allow that anywhere between another three to six minutes till it's fully cooked but very important to always mention try and keep your meat as tender as you can i like to do so by using some i like to do so by using some vegetable stock by deglazing the pan with it and that little bit of stock actually infuses a nice beautiful flavor in there it also allows for you to really get those flavors onto your pan uh, to really get into the meat and of course using a bit of stock as well allows you to control the temperature right through your cooking making sure to color your meat more evenly and of course get a more perfect cooking process going right so the tofu is now nice and crispy at this stage you can proceed to turn your heat off completely and by using a pasta spoon or any particular slotted spoon of your choice, proceed to remove your tofu, holding that on this, uh, uh, along the sides of your pot. Give it anywhere between 10 to 15 seconds to drain any excess oil completely. And you can proceed to rest that on some kitchen towel. Proceed to do so, taking quite a bit of time to allow that excess oil to drip back into your pot. And just proceed to do the same thing right to the very end. Right, simple as that. So now our tofu is ready for the second cooking, but we are going to allow it just a few minutes to cool off. Our beef is also almost fully cooked now, nice and juicy. We should be cooking this to anywhere between medium to rare or to medium, just to allow for it to actually blend in with the flavors right through the process of cooking much later on. But as we allow that to continue cooking right up until the juices are completely absorbed by the meat, we are going to give you this chance to refresh yourselves, take a very short break, and we'll catch you after a very, very short while. See you in a little bit.
Welcome back viewers. For those of you who just missed out on the beginning part and the middle part of the show, we've been working on browning our meat. We also fried our tofu and we introduced the ingredients, but we're, like, we're now uh, working towards the last and final part. So for this particular process, it's a very simple one, working towards plating. So very simply, we will begin by adding a bit of oil to the pan once more. Allow your pan to heat up very, very quickly. And in the meantime, I'm just going to move my ingredients onto a plate. Now, one particular beautiful and important thing to mention when working with stir fry, very important to work on your appearance and second of all on your variety. So for this, I chose at least eight different vegetables or six different vegetables for this recipe. And of course, with the meat option, you can always go surf and tough way, which is of course mixing a bit of white and red meat. But for this particular process, we're going to be using a bit of some soy. So we're going to start this very simple process by chopping up a red onion. So this has already been peeled and halved. So we're going to proceed to chop that very quickly. And we're going to proceed to add that to the hot pan. Of course, tilting your pan forward always allows for you to avoid splashing any oil onto your hands and burning yourself. Now very simply proceed to sweat out your onions. You are definitely going to need a bit of stock for this recipe, so do make a reminder to have a bit of stock just to aid you in deglazing your pan. And of course, also to control the bit of temperature. Remember, while working with a hot pan, especially when doing stir fry, very important to have a very, very hot pan to allow you to cook and brown your ingredients very fast. And of course, without overcooking them. So we're going to start off this process very simply by using our hardy vegetables, which is of course our carrots and our green beans. So green beans in first and your julienne carrots right after. Proceed to toss those in your pan. And you can proceed to add your zucchini to this process. And now you may actually uh, make a reminder that this process will not particularly color your vegetables as much as you want them to. It will actually aid you in getting just a bit of color on your carrots and it will actually begin to give your courgette and your onions a bit of color as well. But remember for processes, particularly if you're trying to get your vegetables very, very tender, you may actually not be using a frying pan for that process. You may actually require a heavy base pan that will not actually do the stir fry as good as a shallow pan will. Right, so your vegetables are now nicely cooking away. We're going to now also infuse this beautiful pan of ingredients with some red chopped chili, which we're going to be incorporating as well to the garden peas and your baby corn. Proceed to mix that through. And you can now proceed to incorporate your meat. And you can reserve the rest of your bullet chili. And at this stage, you can incorporate just a little bit of your stock while mixing through once more. And at this stage, you can proceed to add your aromatics or rather all your seasoning. So we're going to start off by adding some soy sauce. 
I'm also going to add just a little bit of some sesame oil. This will particularly cut the sharpness of the soy and also bring a nice beautiful mellow finish to the dish. And last but not least, a bit of some mixed herbs. Now proceed to toss that once more. Very much maintaining your pan at high heat. Now to that, we're just going to add a bit of spark of color with some vegetables. So I'm going to be using about half a red and half a yellow bell pepper, which of course we will be julienning. So very simply, proceed by pressing it onto the board. That should allow you to get that bitter membrane out completely. And proceed to do the same for your yellow bell pepper. You can discard those and very simply proceed to julienne with a sharp knife. And do the same for the red bell pepper. And you can throw this towards the last and final part of your cooking. Remember those do not need much cooking as opposed to carrots. And as you can be able to see from the cameras, the color really actually calls out as soon as the peppers go in there. And the peppers always add a nice beautiful crunch to your dish. You can proceed to discard the rest. And very important to mention, never forget to season your dish by this stage. So, generous drizzle of some salt. And you can add your tofu at this stage. Now these have now been cooked and very, very crispy, but remember adding them at this particular stage will allow them to grasp that little bit of flavor and soak up just enough liquid off the base of your pan. You can add a small bit of your vegetable stock once more. And just to finish this simple dish off, Proceed to grab some fresh coriander and you can proceed to chop that very, very coarsely. Right, once that's about done, we're going to proceed to give that one more mix through. Making sure, of course, to get as much of the mixture incorporated with a little bit of stock still remaining at the base of your pan. Remember this particularly carries most and all of the flavor. And you can at this stage proceed to turn your heat off completely and we can actually begin to start plating our dish. So very simply, Always begin by making sure that your pan is completely dry, making sure that there's not any excess fluids running through your pan. And you can proceed to begin your plating by of course giving a bit of a mix and lifting off your plate. And just proceed to plate right at the center of your plate. Of course, making sure to serve the biggest chunks last. They're much easier to remove right towards the end of plating. And you can achieve this very simply by sliding them towards one end of the pan and lifting the rest of your ingredients towards the other end closest to you. This should make it very, very easy for you to lift everything off in unison. And you can now proceed to add your chunks of tofu, spreading them very evenly right around your plate. And the tofu will actually be a very good substitute for those of you trying to look for options to avoid um, using any particular starches. It's also very, very nutritious. And of course, very succulent, especially cooked in the right way. So just to finish that off, 
proceed to finish plating off the last bit of your vegetables. And just to finish that very simple dish, finish off by drizzling some fresh coriander right over the top. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my very simple take on a soy stir fry with lamb and vegetables. I hope you've had fun today like I did, and I hope you're very much willing to try this on your own at home. But I will, uh, I will appreciate your feedback. Remember, you can always send us your feedback through our Facebook link, which is Brand Plus TV. You can also catch up on this and many more different dishes that you may have missed out on the show in the previous aisle. But thank you once again for tuning in today. And until the next episode, God bless you all. Bye-bye and see you soon. Mm -hmm.